Hey guys, this is Ryguy Gaming here today, back with a new series. Today we are going to be playing Tomb Raider 2013. Before we begin, I would like to point out that this game is rated M for Mature, and I know I have a lot of younger viewers, so please watch at your own discretion. This game does have quite a bit of violence. But, without further ado, let's go ahead and hop in and watch a cutscene. A famous explorer once said, extraordinary is in what we do, not who we are. I finally set out to make my mark, to find adventure, but instead, adventure found me. moments when life flashes before us we find something something that keeps us going something that pushes us Alrighty, so here we are in game. Uh, obviously games like this are really <laughs> front loaded with story and so for the first episode and a half ish I assume, it's been a while since I've played this, I'm probably gonna have to be quiet a lot as we sit through different cutscenes but um, hopefully when, as the game progresses we can not have to deal with that as much. This game is pretty short to be honest. Like I think I beat it on my first playthrough within like 16 hours. So but I kind of like it. It's one of those games that gets in, tells its story, and then leaves.
There are a ton of games which really revel in their length, and I don't always think that's a good thing. I know people want, like, value or hours played per dollar or whatever, like they try to divide the cost of the game by the hours they get out of it or whatever, but that just seems like a flawed way of thinking to me at least. I mean, I know if you're on a fixed income or something like that, obviously. That is a concern, and obviously I don't want to be paying, like, big money for shorter games, but I think there are better ways to judge a game by its length, obviously. Alrighty, so, as you saw in that last cutscene, we just got... Lara just got stabbed through the gut by a giant PVC pipe, and she would probably- Oh, I need to light the torch again. She would probably be dead, to be honest. Uh, if not now, very soon, considering she's crawling through all this water and mud and stuff. Uh, yeah, she'd probably get infected super fast. And, not to spoil anything, but I don't know if she ever, like, binds her wound. I can't really remember. Uh, maybe she does, but... She kind of just ends up walking it off. Maybe she cauterizes it at one point. I can't remember, but well, I guess we'll find out. It's been a while since I played this game. I don't. I think I said that. Uh, if you can't tell, this game does have some quick time events, which are fine. I know a lot of people hate them. I don't particularly mind them, but. They do add some interaction to the cutscenes. Um, and I'll admit, a tense, a tense button mash does kind of get you more involved with your character when they're struggling and you're struggling to keep up with the mashing, so... Either way, it's not a deal breaker for me like I know it is for a lot of people. But yeah, can you just imagine, like, climbing through water like this with all these guts and s or not really guts, but, like, skeletons and stuff, and, like, you have a hole in your gut? Like, that would not be very good for you. <laughs> so, in this game, like a lot of modern games, we have our version of detective mode. Uh, they call it survival instincts in this game. And so you kind of can see things that are interactable in the environment, which is kind of nice. Uh, I found that especially in the third game, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, uh, sometimes things were difficult to see uh, if they were interactable or just difficult to see in general. Like, they really didn't poke out from the environment. In this game, I feel like they don't really have that... Uh, problem. Most things are pretty obvious what you're supposed to do with them, but it really does help people like me who have a harder time seeing things. Uh, that's also why I keep anti-aliasing pretty low, because I, I feel like it helps that keeps things more defined in the environment if everything has sharper edges than they would if it was just like all kind of mushed together. But anyways, so, if you can't figure out what I'm doing, uh, we need to light all those barrels and stuff on fire over there, but there's a waterfall, so we can't bring a torch through there. So, we're kind of circumventing that by lighting these crates and stuff on fire. Uh, but by causing a huge explosion, now we pretty much caused the cave to collapse, so we kind of have to run out of here. Um, there are a, like, like I was saying earlier, there are a lot of heavy, story heavy sections right up front here in the game. Um, I'll try not to talk over the obvious, like, pre-rendered cutscenes because I want, you know, it's nice to get the story of the game that's being played, like, uh, I'm not doing a challenge run with this series like I do for the Batman games, so we will be watching cutscenes and stuff. And I will be leveling up and everything just so we can play through the game normally. Stop. 
appropriate. <laughs> and so that's one of those examples of the violence I was talking about. I don't want to say this game is super gory, but it is pretty unrealistic with how much like blood and stuff there is. Um, I don't really know why they decided to go that route. I guess they think extra blood and stuff makes a game even more realistic, but when it kind of just makes it look silly, in my opinion, but whatever. Alright, let's get the heck out of here. While I do like the music of this reboot trilogy, uh, I think the second reboot with like Legend, Anniversary, and Underworld, I think they do a better job of kind of capturing the essence of the original music. Um, which I mean, obviously not everything has to be a call back to the original, but it would be kind of nice for older fans. I think there are some music cues and callbacks here and there. At least in Rise of the Tomb Raider. I'm not so sure about okay. this one or Shadow, but either way. <laughs> this is exactly how I would be if I was walking over a log like this. I would have to go so slow, even though I think it's better to be faster. Um... And I think girls are better at stuff like this in general because I think their center of mass is lower. Uh, so it's easier to kind of not topple over when you're doing something like that. If it were me, I'd probably like get down and scooch across on all fours to be honest. I don't know about you guys, but I'm horrible when it comes to balance stuff. So normally this game has a lot of really annoying camera effects, like you can see the camera is still pretty shaky during cutscenes and stuff, but normally like they'll have the screen like have wetness and dirt on it, and I'm not really a fan of those kind of effects, so I just turn them off for this playthrough. Um, I did a recording earlier where I had them on and it was just annoying and distracting, like maybe you like them when you play, but... I just thought for a video they'd be kind of distracting and annoying, so I didn't. Uh, I turned them off. If you guys want to, maybe we can turn them back on for future episodes, but I think it looks fine the way it is right now. Like, I bet if I didn't point it out and you've never played this game before, you probably wouldn't have even notice it's missing, so. can get a nice overview of the island here or I mean of I guess that's not the island that's just kind of like a it's pointing out like a pirate ship <laughs> so yes a lot of this game is uh, platforming and climbing it's pretty reminiscent of the uncharted games if you've ever played those I never have but I'd like to but they, these, this game came out around the same time, or at least after them, so a lot of people compare this game to the Uncharted series. Sam! They must have come this way. You'll notice that I'm turning up the volume in a lot of cutscene sections. I'm not sure if I'll do it for that one, but for a lot of them I probably would. Ouch! That looked painful. Not that a lot of stuff she hasn't been 
Uh, never mind. That's not making sense what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Anyways, um, let me know if you like me increasing the volume of like story segments or if you're fine with it just quiet like it is in the background right now. I don't know how people feel about stuff like that, so yeah, be sure to let me know, please. If you like increasing the volume or if you think it's fine with how loud it is like right now. <laughs> Is anyone listening? Please respond. Here's the soon-to-be world-famous archaeologist, Lara Croft, in her native habitat. She's on the hunt for the lost kingdom of Yamatai, home to the fabulous Himiko, mythical sun queen, and ancestor of yours truly. <laughs> Sam, this is serious. Oh, sweetie, I know. I'm just trying to lighten the mood here. Everyone's so on edge. What are you so worried about? I'm close to something. I'm sure of it. I just don't know if the others will listen. Or even if they should. Lara, you know this stuff better than anyone. Seriously. I'm not just saying this to make you feel better. I trust you. Roth trusts you. You got this. Now let's take a break, okay? Okay. Okay. And Sam, thanks. She's not always this serious, you know? How can you suggest I'm not serious about this expedition, Laura? But it's not just Sam's family funding us. I put my savings on the line, too. We've all got some kind of stake in this. The funding won't last forever, Whitman. That's precisely why we should push east, not west. No one believes Yamata... No one believes Yamata is that far east. The books simply don't support it. Well, whoever wrote those books never found Yamata. I've talked to Roth about this. There's no point in following in other people's footsteps, Dr. Whitman. I refuse to bet my reputation on your hunch. I'm the lead archaeologist here. And when were you last in the field with a TV crew behind you? Got 30 years experience, two PhDs, one in East Asian history. So why don't you just stick to boats, Mr. Grimm? Ship, Dr. Whitman. It's a ship. You don't need a PhD to know Look, that. Going east will take us directly into the Dragon's Triangle. That's where we need to go. Lara, my little bird. I'd follow you almost anywhere, but that place has a bad energy. Bad storms, more like, makes the Bermuda Triangle look like Disney World. <laughs> Sign me up. The stories about Queen Himiko say she could summon storms. Myths are usually based on some version of the truth. What if Yamatai was somewhere in the Triangle itself? Well, look, this is the satellite imagery from inside the Dragon's Triangle. That doesn't look good. If it's wet, I can sail on it. Oh, don't tell me you're seriously Enough. cons- Reyes is right. We don't have the funds to piss about. It's now or never. Lara's offering fresh ideas and a plan. I'm the captain here. It's my decision. We're going into the Dragon's Triangle. Why am I even here? I can't 
just sit here. A couple things that I find interesting about that cutscene. <laughs> um, I don't know why Sam would only be carrying around one match. Like, wouldn't you have more than just one in your backpack? I don't know. And then second of all, I don't know why the writers or designers or whatever even went with the whole one match drama thing. If they weren't going to do anything with it, like blowing out or anything like that, like they normally do. So it kind of just seemed pointless to only have one match. I mean, maybe it's just kind of a little teeny amount of drama, but not a lot. I'm just going to pick up these arrows around here. And we can climb up here and get this here bow. See, now, now Laura's kind of... Running around <laughs> just fine. Now she climbs along this tree, seemingly okay, also. Although she still has a huge hole in her side. Reach. Oh, I have to wait till he swings. There we go. is just like a zombie game and that guy comes back to life. <laughs> just remember Roth's training. You can have the best farming technique in the world, but it won't mean a thing if you can't focus. Alrighty, Keep let's look for focus. some deers. Some deer. Is deers so even a real word? I need to find something to eat. <sighs> or is it always just deer? Because I know some animals, like, or some words like fish versus fishes, like, both are proper words, I think. But. Oh, there you are. Don't run away. Come back. Break my legs. Oh, there he is. Gosh, this is sensitive. <laughs> Did I just miss? Son of a gun. A what? I just wasted like six arrows on this guy. Sorry. Show my ammo in this game. Oh, in the upper right. right corner. You won't always have some fancy gadget to tell you where you are. If you can learn to read the land and the stars, uh, you'll always be able to find your way home. So yeah, if you've been watching the PlayStation One version of this game, you'll notice that this game definitely starts out a lot more, a lot differenter more different different I guess it would just be different this game definitely starts out different than the original first Tomb Raider I believe they were trying to go for like a more I think it's this way yeah if you use your survival instinct it'll usually tell you where to go if you get lost which is what the tutorial was telling me but anyways yeah, in this game, obviously, we're playing as, like, an inexperienced Lara, whereas in the PlayStation version, uh, she's already been on at least one adventure, as far as I know, according to the introduction written in the manual. Um, it might be, but... Yeah, never mind. We'll just sit down at the campfire now. 
So, like I said, we are going to be doing upgrades and stuff in this series. I'm not making this a challenge run. So you have some different stuff here. Um, I don't really find myself killing animals. Like you can kill like deer and stuff to get what they call salvage, which is basically just your crafting resource. Uh, there's only one in the game and killing animals and finding little uh, boxes full of salvage is two ways to get it. Um, but yeah, I don't really find myself killing animals, so most of these animal ones are kind of worthless for me. Like, eventually I do get them because you do kind of have to unlock some of these lower tier skills to get to some of the higher tier ones, but I think for me, probably something like this is a better one for me. Um... Although, obviously, arrows aren't super hard to come by. I think in the early game, this will probably be one of the most useful upgrades. I think next I'll probably get that uh, perk that lets me recover more salvage from boxes. Just so that I can... Or from, like, crates and stuff. Which one is it? Uh, yeah, like this one. Uh, and then you also have uh, hunter upgrades, which are basically just gun and melee skills and some other stuff. So when I exit out of here, there will be a cutscene. So let's go ahead and watch that. This is Conrad Roth, captain of the Endurance. We are shipwrecked on an island inside the Dragon's Triangle. Roth, Lara. you're alive. Easy, easy. Are you okay? What happened? I remember the beach, and then it went black and I woke up in a cave. There was this crazy man, Roth, and a dead body. Oh God. Where are you now, Lara? Are you safe? It was so horrible. It's all my fault. This is all my fault. Lara, listen to me. I sent an SOS from the Endurance before I abandoned her. Hopefully someone caught it. I've spoken to the others. We're regrouping at my location. <sighs> Please come and get me. I have to stay here. You can do this, Lara. Remember when we climbed Snowden? You said the key was knowing that all you've got to do is just keep, keep moving. moving. Remember everything I've taught you, Lara. You're ready for this. And keep your radio on. Okay. All right, and then for some reason, <laughs> they don't play it the first time you sit down, but Lara has some thoughts she can... Music. Uh, yeah, you can hear some music, but when you sit down at campfires a lot of the time, Lara will have something to say, uh, so we can listen to that. How do I start? Okay. This is Lara Croft, an archaeologist from the Endurance, shipwrecked on an island in the Dragon's Triangle, east of Japan. This place is incredible. I've seen wrecks here that could date back centuries. We weren't the first, and I know we're not alone. Something isn't right about this place. If I don't get off this island, maybe someone will eventually find this. Yeah, this is one of those games where there are a lot of audio logs and journal pages and stuff to find, so... Uh, it's definitely a game if you like collecting stuff. You'll definitely probably find some enjoyment here, so that's definitely cool if that's your thing. But anyways, guys, uh, this actually is going to do it for this episode. It's been going on for like almost or over 30 minutes, just barely, I don't know for sure. But I want to keep these episodes around that length because I know some of my previous videos have been getting kind of on the longer side of like an hour or so, uh, 45 minutes to an hour. And I, I'd like to keep these just a little bit shorter and I feel like half hour is probably a, a good length for a series like this. And I feel like this is kind of the calm before uh, we move on. So next time we'll try to go find our friends and see how that goes. 
But anyways, guys, thank you for watching. Uh, please let me know what you think about this series uh, down in the comments below. And I hope you did enjoy it. If you have any requests about like volume or um, like to turn the screen effects back on, just let me know. But other than that, I hope you all have an excellent day and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.